So I guess this is an answer to that question that was uh, the question that was encountered on the last or asked on the last video. Um, why, why is this one more resonance stabilized than the other one? Well, I mean, it's a good question because we didn't try to do any resonance structures of this other one. So let's try to do it. Can we push this positive charge onto anything else, right? So remember here, we've got the two hydrogens. It's an ugly bond, so let's just draw it. Draw it even uglier. Okay, so like that, we've got those two hydrogens. Do we have any hydrogens here? Well, carbon has to have four bonds, so no. Here, no, right? So this carbon has four bonds, this carbon has four bonds, right? Uh, this carbon is the only one with three bonds, you know what I'm saying? So we can't actually push that positive charge onto any other carbon. So if we look here, right, what we can do is take a pi bond and move it over, right? So here, we don't have a pi bond right next to that positive charge, you know? So here we can do that, right? And when we do that, now we've created another the sp2 carbon, right? So essentially what we've got here is a series of these sp2 carbons in a row, right? So let's look at this. This is a good way to ask yourself, can this resonate? All right, so we'll mark our sp2 carbons with a little red star, okay? So that'll be sp2, okay? And we'll look at the sp2 carbons in this structure relative to this structure, okay? So let's start with this structure because we know it's not the right structure, okay? So if I point to a carbon and it's sp2, you tell me yes, okay? So that one, is that sp2? Yes, right? Yes, okay? So that one, that one, yes. Right, that one, yes. Right. So remember, sp2 and uh, trigonal planar are like the same thing. Okay. So are these all these carbons trigonal planar? Right. Yeah. So is that one? Yes. Right. Is that one? Yes. Is that one? Yes. Okay. So all those are in a row. Right. Is this one? No, it's not. Right. It's tetrahedral. Right. Or we call it sp3, okay? This one is, or not? Yes, definitely, right? That's where the carbocation is. All carbocations are sp2 hybridized. And what about this one here? No, okay? So you notice we have this continuous ring of sp2 carbons, and we have this one that's stuck out over by itself, okay, where there's this carbon in between, right? So here, let's do the same sort of analysis. Okay, so of course all of these are going to be the same, so let's just mark all those as sp2 carbon. And is this one an sp2 carbon? Yes, very good, right, because it's only got the three bonds to it, right? Okay, so is this one here? No, right? It's sp3, yeah, it's got the four bonds to carbon, it's sp3. What about this one? Four bonds, so it's sp3. Right? So you can see the inherent difference here in the structure, right? So we've got a continuous line of sp2 carbons in this structure. That's why we're able to do these all these resonance structures, okay? so. Notice where all the resonance, or where all the pi bond moves to, right? It only moves to in between carbons that are sp2, right? So ones that are, have the ability to accept that pi bond. That. What if we tried to move? I mean, we can't even do it, right? It won't even do it. So, even if, 
even if you made this structure, that's I guess the last thing we should talk about, is even if you made this structure, this intermediate is more stable, and you can tell by all the resonance structures, that if you made this particular carbocation, what would happen is you would have a 1,2 hydride shift. Okay, so you'd have like that. And that, of course, would make that structure there. And then you'd be off to the races with that. And then, of course, if you recall what the product was going to be, the Cl minus would again attack that. Okay? Is that cool? Let's erase this just so we don't confuse anybody about that attack. Okay. Any questions on that one? Does that answer your question from the last one? Okay, good.